excellent to see you today. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, obvious question, what are you doing with the money, sir? Uh, we're, we're doing two things actually, Steve. Uh, first of all, it gives us uh, near-term protection for any further COVID uncertainty. Um, and secondly, it gives us a, um, a stronger balance sheet so that we can uh, get our business ready to rebound strongly as COVID eases, and in particular to land um, a series of um, a specific new business wins actually and to commercialize those. And uh, we put those in place uh, through the summer and early autumn, and we're, we've got an exciting um, uh, launch pipeline for new products as we go into 2021. That launch, I can't believe I'm going there this early in the interview, but is that launch programme all about those of us who have decided to take a different attitude to meet, Patrick? Oh, well, I think that's, I, I think that's in part, uh, you know, what we're doing with new product launches. I mean, certainly if I take the, the sort of last full year we had pre-COVID, we, we found that, um, you know, we launched uh, about 1,200 new products um, in, in 2019 of which over 400 were either vegetarian or meat-free products in some way. Patrick, could we talk about um, what your visibility looks like in terms of performance from here then? We, we obviously have seen good progress around vaccines and we're all looking to um, a brighter future for the first quarter and second quarter of next year. How do you think you're going to be able to take advantage of whatever opening up is allowed? Yeah, I mean, hopefully we will. But um, Jeff, let me give you um, just you know, some real examples of what's um, what's happened with our business through the pandemic and and, and what that's meaning for trading. So, um, as you know, um, we have almost a billion pounds of sales in the food to go area. We're the largest um, sandwich and food to go manufacturer in the UK. So when when the first lockdown came in in April, um, we saw that our revenue and volumes in food to go as mobility really tightened up in the UK, fell by as much as 70%. Um, but by the time we got to September, um, as society and the economy was opening up, uh, we were back to about 20% down uh, year on year in our food to go business and about 15% down in the overall group. Uh, we've now come into a, um, you know, we're now in you know week four um, of the new lockdown. Um, and we're about 30% down in this lockdown. So we're down a bit more than we were in September, but it's nothing like the kind of apocalyptic levels of fall uh, that we would have seen um, uh, in April and early May. So with that, as we, uh, as we look forward, um, you know, what we're seeing actually is that um, um, particularly with um, kids, kids still in schools, um, students going to university, somewhat greater level of, um, of people going to work um, and more mobility around um, the UK and probably uh, somewhat less of a fear of the, of, of the virus um, that actually food to go sales are um, uh, perhaps surprisingly resilient actually. So we're, um, um, you know, we, we think the, the next uh, three to six months will remain uncertain. We don't know what, um, you know, what measures would be in place um, post Christmas and what, what that will mean for, um, uh, for how people will shop. Um, but certainly by the time we get to the summer, um, I think that suite of medical interventions, particularly around the vaccine, uh, plus, um, you know, continued improvements on, on track and trace technology should give us a basis to begin to come out permanently the other side of COVID by then. And Patrick, you just alluded to some of the uncertainties around consumption before. You can just delve a little deeper into that because this lockdown is a little bit different where you've got some stores and some cafes still open but for takeaway food, very different to the last lockdown where people were forced to very much source all of their food from supermarkets. So what sort of transition are you seeing now in those consumption patterns? And as you see more of an opening up of the economy, how could uh, some of those patterns be affected, do you think, down the track? Yeah, I mean, Karen, simply people are buying food to go in different places. Um, so, you know, ev everyone associates these kinds of products with uh, city centre locations, travel locations, you know, the city of London, central Manchester, uh, Bullring in Birmingham, uh, Heathrow Airport, King's Cross, Manchester Piccadilly Station. Um, and all of those locations have been hammered um, in terms of volume uh, through this period. But what you're seeing that's mitigating a lot of that is much more food consumption in suburbs, in market towns, uh, in small villages. And if you look at where the green core customer set is, um, supermarkets, the co-op, uh, M&S, a, um, a lot of the 
outlets and um, and formats that they have um, in in those kinds of locations are trading very very well because you know if you go um, you know if you go around the you know the suburbs of London the sub- suburbs of Manchester Birmingham etc there's actually a lot of food to go activity happening there many of those people are not traveling to work because they've been told not to and actually they're learning Karen, they're they're learning the habit and how to live their lives of not having to commute to work but that doesn't mean that people are sitting in their homes all day um, and making their own lunch. They're actually often up and about either walking or driving to uh, convenience stores or coffee shops. And, and, and that's um, underpinning a, a pretty resilient level of demand uh, for sandwiches and food to go items that we make.